as a new firefighter turning up to a fire for the first time, the most startling thing was just how searingly hot it is. You're sort of thinking, you know, am I meant to be here? It etches itself into your memory. But certainly the experience I take from the fire ground makes me a better researcher. I can say that unequivocally. The basic wildfire behaviour triangle is fuel, weather, topography. What's really interesting from our research point of view is the way that those things interact with each other and it's those interactions which can really cause your fire activity to escalate very quickly. The more we warm as a globe, the more heat waves we will see and they'll be even more intense. It's very clear. Things heat up more quickly, things dry out more quickly. That's when you see enhanced impacts on bushfire risk as well as human health. We know that bushfire smoke can have quite severe implications. For instance, in the black summer bushfire period, it was estimated that there were uh, about 400 premature deaths and an additional 1,500 people um, attending emergency departments due to exposure to that bushfire smoke. Climate change is predicted to increase how intense the fires may become and also the fire season will start earlier and finish later. The main sort of measure that we have looking at um, how extreme fires are tracking is the number of pyrocumulonimbus events that we've seen in Australia, which is literally the fire thunderstorm. If you go back to the 80s, you were getting sort of one or two events. 2010s, you were getting multiple events. And then in the black summer itself, you were getting you know, something like 40 events just in a single season. Given that we've only warmed by one degree Celsius as a globe, and we're already seeing all these changes, you know, the worst is yet to come. We're still looking at warming by somewhere between two and a half and three degrees Celsius, maybe even three and a half degrees Celsius. How do we keep our bush safe? How do we keep our houses safe? What do we do if properties become completely uninsurable because bushfires are just so bad? Bushfires and natural disasters have always been an issue, but the severity and the spread of these bushfires is growing. Urban sprawl has allowed the footprint of cities to grow hugely and in, in many ways exponentially. The further we encroach or expand the edges of the city or encroach onto bush um, puts us you know, closer to said risk. It's just a disaster waiting to happen. If we need more housing, we can accommodate it in existing suburbs. We need to stitch it in gently. And so where you might have an ageing apartment building, you could pop another six or eight apartments in one or two storeys on the roof, and you're adding density locally, but it's, it's a very gentle method of doing that. We can still fix things, we can still make things better, but we need to move fast on that. Because basically, I mean, these sorts of fires, you don't put them out once they're, once they're started. You put them out five years before they start. So it's really having that sort of forethought. If everyone can just do one thing at a time and make that as part of their normal routine and then move on to the next thing. So for example, that might be planting more plants in your yard to try and keep your house cool during a hot spell. Maybe saving to put solar panels on your roof. So there's little changes we can make at the daily scale, as well as working towards bigger changes. And at the same time, campaign. You know, Vote for people that want to make a difference so they can make a difference more quickly.